This question, at first, it seems quite tricky, but actually what you've got to do in questions like this when they give you a novel context, a context that you won't have studied a lot about, is you have to find the content to apply to it. So when you're reading, think, which part of my syllabus am I supposed to be applying to this situation? Okay, so tennis again in this same series of exams. Um, this time, again, about the serve. It's going to hit the ball over the net, blah. Fundamental node of oscillation, mode of oscillation is shown. So this is the fundamental mode of oscillation. Transverse waves travel along the length of the racket at a speed of 160 meters per second. So you've got the wave speed. Um, you've got a distance between two nodes. And if you can imagine a standing wave, a full wave would be the distance for one full cycle. So this 45 centimeters is only half a wavelength. So a full wavelength is 90 centimeters or rather 0.9 meters. And wave speed is 160 meters per second. Hopefully you don't really need to go to the equation sheet to find the wave speed equation because it's a big part of your GCSE. You're going to rearrange for F. So F is V over lambda. So 160 divided by 0.9. Boom. 178 hertz. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. Okay, just a couple of things to trip up the weaker students. Right, what have we got here? Well, straight away you see that, you know it's about oscillations, you're gonna think damping. Okay, um, this is displacement <coughs> against time. You can see that the amplitude of that oscillation has reduced as time goes on. Um, and it's reduced exponentially, but it's not going to ask you about exponentials, I think. Hollow spaces are built into the racket frame and small lead spheres are packed into these spaces. I didn't know that was a feature of tennis racket design, actually. Um, I don't know if my racket's got that or if it's a new thing. But anyway, um, explain how this results in the graph shown. So if you've seen that graph and you've recognized damping, then really this question might as well say, explain damping. So my first two points I'm going to make is that energy is removed from the system, what damping is. All right, so if energy is removed from the system, this causes a reduce in amplitude over time. And I may just, just in case, because I know it's an exponential. I'm just gonna put that in as well, but it's not actually part of the mark scheme. But, um, you know, it might be at one point, explaining the shape of this graph might have, you know, an exponential in it. Um, and, and lastly, I'm just gonna now apply this damping. What's doing this damping? These small lead spheres. So what's gonna to happen to these lead spheres? Well, there's two ways that those small <coughs> lead spheres could absorb that energy. They could deform. Absorb some of that energy. Um, the mark scheme uses the word plastically, but I'm not sure I really like that because um, are they just going to stay change shapes? But I suppose if they didn't deform plastically, they wouldn't be absorbing energy. But I, I don't know. That's, it did say plastically in the mark scheme. And then the last point to say, or the lead spheres, they vibrate. And it's this mode of vibration that is absorbing that energy there. Okay, I hope that makes sense. You know, you've got to see this, okay, it's quite confusing at first. See this shape here, recognize damping, explain, apply for the last mark. So I hope when you saw that, that you, uh, you realized actually it was quite an easy explain question after all, even though it wasn't necessarily obvious what the question was actually about at first. The more you practice exam questions, the more you're going to get used to doing that, applying different parts of the syllabus to these new contexts. But you need, therefore, to have a really good overview of the content in your specification so you know exactly what you have got 
to be applying to these different contexts.